and all right uh, firstly i'd like to acknowledge the Wurundjeri Woiwurrung people as the traditional owners of the country on which Nilambik is located we pay our respects to elders past present and future and extend that respect to all first nations people we respect the enduring strength of the Wurundjeri Woiwurrung and acknowledge that sovereignty was never ceded welcome everybody for the third carbon farming webinar in a series of four with the fabulous Louisa Kylie from Carbon Farmers of Australia. <laughs> it's a good intro. Isn't it? um, all, uh, this webinar is being recorded. The last two are now on YouTube. They're in the chat, as uh, Laura mentioned, and um, there are loads of resources on the Carbon Farmers of Australia website if you'd like other information to go with the webinars. And I'll hand over to you, Louisa. Okay. Thank you very much. You've um, allowed me to share. Can I can I share? Yeah. That's not the right one. The review. That's showing some uh, some great. So I've. Uh, farm some of my uh, other material of course and there are some really good farmers on some of them uh, let's go to uh, view okay all good okay everyone can see okay and welcome to everybody who has um, hung in there with us uh, to this third episode and uh, who you are now amongst the uh, best informed people in Australia. So look, and, and, and as I said, if there's any questions, please, uh, you know, uh, don't, do not hesitate to let me know. And uh, so just prior to this, uh, Stephanie and I have been uh, going through the look-see, which I introduced to you at the end of the last uh, pod, um, webinar. And so that we can do it on the screen for you so that you can go there with your own piece of land and draw the polygon yourself and get these estimates but i've got a lot to go through so i will get started um, and today i'm actually going to segue to the soil carbon space i think i might have said i was going to do the tree carbon plantings so what we did last time was that we figured out the paperwork to do one of these projects and I, I hope that none of you were um, uh, daunted by that because it's not rocket science. It's just something that you, you, you do it once or twice and, and then you can do it. So, you know, let, let's get started. This is not advice. This is uh, general information. Uh, a couple of reminders. You are the, the um, caretakers of a vast carbon resource that is becoming more and more important for various different reasons. So plenty of opportunity. This is the way we did it in the early days and what I'm going to show you today. So we uh, kept our sheep on, we were uh, trained in holistic management. We kept our sheep in the, this is the 2007, 2008 drought and we used uh, sacrifice paddocks to save our country, put the, uh, our best country, and this is uh, carbon farming because down, uh, down below here, you're saving uh, the, the biomass that you need for the carbon, you're saving your ground cover. And, uh, and in the sacrifice paddocks, it, it wasn't as important. And, and this is one of the things that we found over time. And to remind you that for, for soil carbon credits and credits in general and biodiversity credits and stewardship credits, what we're aiming for is stronger rural communities. It's a very well known fact that uh, if, the car, if the farming community is doing well, the regional community is doing well. So we want to take it back to, to, those, to those areas. We use tradable certificates. In Australia, they're called ACCUs. They all represent one tonne of carbon dioxide. And if you're saving methane or you're saving nitrous oxide from going up in the air, you are still going to claim in carbon dioxide equivalents. That's what makes it so good. One currency that can be traded all around the world. 
you need a method. And in Australia, we have the Emissions Reduction Fund. And under that, there are 26 methods of which two or three are most useful to farmers, especially the audience to which we're speaking to uh, tonight. But do not think that you can get make a claim for a credit unless you're following a method. And the first thing you do, I should ask for a show of hands, but the first thing that you must do is register your project. And you cannot claim any credits unless you register your project under a method first. Tonight, we're going to have a little look at the soil carbon method. It's potentially the most important due to the size. Farmers control over 48% of the land mass, and so therefore they are the VIPs in this. And photosynthetic activity, these days, some of this has been called nature-based solutions. And if you look at that whole farm, if you take that as a whole, you can consider it as nature-based solutions. So no matter how many uh, of the other credits are, are made, the emissions reduction credits, the methane reduction from coal mines, all of those things, if we don't use the nature-based solutions, we will not reach the Paris targets. So we are incredibly important and we need to stand up. This was the point I made just about others being able to claim a credit, but we must be able to, uh, we must take the carrot and, and not be hit with the stick of regulation, which would come if we don't engage with this market. This is a reminder just that your risk and return has got to do with your price, the tonnes per hectare. Now, that we'll see this a little bit in the look-see because we will be looking at uh, not the price per tonne, but the tonnes per hectare and the hectares enrolled is what we'll be able to see. And then you will be able to make an estimate of some of those, uh, some of those others. Um, and what you can do, the two that we find are the, the, the most important to the people that are on, on this webinar, are plant seedlings to establish a permanent forest and store carbon in soil. So, store the carbon back in the soil. And I just love that one. Uh, and we choose using uh, the whole of farm carbon audit, but just because I know the, the type of audience that we have, I, I can um, be clearer on those two being the main two. This is the bit that we went through the last time and wasn't that fun uh, as we unpacked these seeming, you know, oh, there's just six, six, six steps, easy peasy. Um, and then we went into some of the detail, which, uh, you know, is a little bit more uh, in, in detail, a little bit more complex, but you just take it one step at a time uh, in order to get through. Apply uh, to register. So registering is king. And this was how we show just the, the market and how it can arrange itself from singular farmers through to an aggregator. I'll speak just a little bit about an aggregator uh, this evening. Um, and but also farmers can do it on their own. And aggregation is not as easy in the soil carbon space. And I'll talk about that. And that's because basically because everybody wants to do their own form of carbon farming. Somebody might want to do a cover crop. Somebody might want to do uh, multi-species pasture cropping. So, uh, you know, that's hard for an aggregator then to understand which farmer is earning precisely which, which credits. Um, so, right, just to remind ourselves again, so these are just our reminder ones uh, of the rise and rise of co-benefits. This is the stuff you need to keep your ear to the ground. My, if you subscribe to my newsletter, I keep people up to date on things like that, but potentially not necessarily by state. So it is important to, you know, to understand what your states are doing. And we had a look at what the, the, the uh, ag, your Victorian ag was saying. However, it's, it's not developed yet. And so you do need somebody to keep their eye on it, potentially make calls to find out when this is going to happen. You wanna be at the forefront because 15.3 million, it's not that much money. 
when it comes down to you know who they're going to fund so you want to be at the at the front of that uh, but not not forgetting that the federal sphere is very important in in that side uh, side as well so uh this is the federal sphere what is happening uh, david little proud and uh, if, if you come to my conference next year in may i hope we do have one thing between then and that would be a federal election and so that you know is uh, puts a little bit of a doubt as to exactly what will be happening we've just had a change of premier in new south wales and already you know there are changes so uh but a labor government is if the government changes a labor government is unlikely to unwind any of these types of things they are more inclined to them normally than the others just to remind you that i have my 10th carbon farming conference and expo in Aubrey next year and it's going to be big already i've got the clean energy regulator coming um and 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 others that, that are lining up this should be the biggest one of all and my here's my little um ad uh, carbon farmers of australia is able to do full service in terms of uh, any of these projects or we can also uh, consult on them because when when you've got a smaller farm it really is going to behove you to attempt to do it on your own and the and the tree planting space is the easiest to do that and i've i've said that before so let's just have a look at that as as we go through um australian farm credits are highly valued already um did i i can't remember if i said a price last time but right now it's 28 a year ago it was 14 and we are paris agreement compliant so if you get one tree accu uh, and it's worth 30 dollars now uh, and but but you also look to potentially having an accu plus which means that you're uh, recording your bio your uh, biodiversity increase you've seen a bilby you've seen you know the, there's five more echidnas you saw a platypus you know all those sort of things are really valuable now under certain things uh, you know and, and you want to you're looking not just for that accu because uh it might not be enough to tip you over into a project but if you can get some other uh credit for it i'm not going to go into aggregation in, in too much detail because it's a it's fraught basically it's not that easy apart from in a tree pro in, in a tree planting project and that is uh, because what an aggregator does is it was always thought that it would be the way that the smaller farmers you know could come could come together and it still is if the method is simple enough like a, a, a tree carbon because in the tree carbon one everyone has to plant trees that are native to the district two meters and above uh, all those all those rules look after them fire breaks very similar very homogenous however with the soil carbon method you've got more choice you might want to do a compost um, on on your on your land or you might want to do multi-species pasture cropping uh, and then it's very difficult for the aggregator to say this farmer is earning this much and this farmer is earning this much so I would only um, suggest aggregation. We haven't aggregated uh, um, projects, and I do believe that you know there are people who have a, a tried and, and it hasn't been successful. Here's a couple of the other reasons to you know the legal obligations, uh, eligible interest holder consent. We we didn't go quite down that 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 far the the last time, and you've got to remember that they are a financial instrument which is why it's like a stock or a bond, which is why Carbon Farmers of Australia needs to have a financial services license for carbon in order to talk about, not, not talk about things in general. I don't need a license to talk about these things, but if I'm going to suggest to you about carbon credits or you know the sale of your carbon credits, then I need to be, have that license sitting behind me. So that's just the general idea of um, of aggregation, and and I, it, it's it's well worth considering in a tree planting space. 
so that's uh, that's my conclusion on that so i'm segueing now to how do we mount or what is required because we know how to mount we know the administration now we've got six steps you register fit and proper person uh get it registered undertake the activity uh get it audited write an offsets report make a claim easy so but then what are you allowed to do what are the rules within a soil carbon uh, method and next week i will do the, the the equivalent with the tree planting one uh, which has has quite simple uh, requirements uh, right now we are in the if you were to try and re, to wanted to register a project today in a soil carbon uh, a soil carbon project you would be under the 2018 soil carbon method however uh, we have got the 2021 coming. And so, uh, you know, I would say to you right now, look, let's wait. And as soon as the 2021 is on the shelf, on the virtual shelf, let's use that one because it's got uh, more activities that are allowed and, you know, an easing, or sometimes they like to call it streamlining <laughs> when they make things a little bit easier but it, it, they've got a serious attempt to lower the complexity. So, uh, and you can go and look at the 2018 method. However, I would suggest that you don't confuse yourself <laughs> and just wait till the 2021 comes. And on my newsletter, I will be letting everybody know uh, when, when that is done. We, we know that you have, to, you have to pass an audit before you can make a claim. And we know that the methods are specific with the rules and regulations. Therefore, you have to be, you have to do not take the method lightly. Um, but we are the only country to sell Paris Target agree, a compliant carbon credits, soil carbon credits in the world. However, there's only been about 200 sold. So that's how long it's taken the mystery of soil carbon and the mystery of soil carbon increase to become a, rea to become a reality and to, to make it into a market situation. So uh, we're at the forefront, but it's a baby, baby industry. Many, there's over 150 soil carbon registered projects on the clean energy regulator site. However, they've only just had their baseline done. The first thing you've got to do is your, is your baseline to, um, to make sure how much carbon you've got there right at the moment. So register, this is a soil carbon project, register, baseline your soil, soil test. How much carbon is in there at the moment? And it's not a percentage. We have to change the percentage soil carbon that's in there into a ton of soil carbon. If you happen to have any soil tests from previous, that can assist you in terms of uh, your percentage at the moment. E.g., uh, you know, down to 15 centimetres, I have measured my soil, even if you've got a soil organic matter uh, test, uh, because your soil organic carbon is a, around 58% of your soil organic matter. So if you know your soil organic matter, you can uh, surmise your soil organic carbon. Some soil tests, though, come back with soil organic carbon as a percentage. And in Australia, we have, you know, ancient soils and low carbon. And whatever carbon was there 100 years ago, we've done a very good job of um, taking it out uh, on the backs in the hides of animals and in wool and in grain uh, without putting it back in. We remembered to put back in nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur, all of those, because you can do that in a bag, but we forgot to put the, the carbon back in. And now, happy days, there's a market for which you can put the, the soil carbon back in and improve your soils at the same time. Your soil moisture content will improve and your soil water holding will improve and your soil structure will improve. That's one of the main reasons why the government has, you know, come on board with this, because it's a way to assist uh, Australian farms 
to become more uh, productive uh, using a market that they don't uh, necessarily have to pay for. So um, th this is the allowed activities. There are a fairly wide range of, acti of activities now that you can choose from. And the best way to sort of find out, uh, one, of the, one of the big ones in a grazing sense has always been the intensification of grazing. That is to say, uh, if you've got uh, 10 paddocks now, but you would like to uh, time control your grazing, control your grazing a little bit more carefully to save the biomass, to increase your biomass above the ground and therefore below ground, which is where the soil carbon gets uh, stored, then you can, you can do that as a new activity. We must find a new activity. You cannot do business as usual with any of these, with any method, business as usual, is what you've already got and that's called the baseline and so in the soil carbon space what we do is we measure the baseline first and then you know you've got 10 tons per hectare in there and then that's your baseline and if you improve that to 20 tons then you can sell the difference and then you can continue to sell the difference as long as it keeps improving for up to 25 years or you could start a new project as, as well. Once you, your soil does get to an equilibrium of soil carbon that is dependent on where you are, the rainfall, the management activities. So, but, and then if you say to me, well, you know, what is my equilibrium? It's how long is a piece of string at the moment until you experiment, until you find what works, until you, uh, that until there's other people with some, uh, results as well so you have to choose at least one new acti uh, new new activity however don't be put off by that in terms of um, what I just said if you've got 10 paddocks and you change it to 12 well that's the new activity and you have intensified your grazing and that is counted as your activity and it, in the 2021 method, that does not prevent you from doing other things like um, compost teas, composts, uh, multi-species pasture cropping, cover crops, biological fertilizers, uh, Charlie carp, foliar sprays. You know, so long. The the thing to ask when 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 people say, you know, what what will increase carbon in my soils? That's what to ask your supplier now that is one of the reasons why i run the carbon farming conference because i have at least 35 exhibitors and they all want to show you why you should choose them as your carbon farming partner in terms of the uh, what they what they want to put on to their farms so here's here's some of them um, you, you can uh, apply if you apply lime you do need to account for the emissions. If you applied, if you said to me, well, my new activity is I apply 50 kg of nitrogen per hectare per year. And what I want to do is apply 100 kg of nitrogen because that will surely get me more biomass above the ground, the more biomass above the ground, the more biomass below the ground. Uh, and I would say that's fine, but I have to account for the nitrous oxide that leaches from the nitrogen fertilizer that you put on the ground. The trouble with uh, synthetic uh, nitrogen is that it, it's reasonably inefficient and it not only leaches out uh, down through the soil but it also releases uh, into the atmosphere and as soon as it hits the atmosphere it releases nitrous oxide which is a very potent uh, greenhouse gas. So you know that's and then the sort of things you need to know. Oh, okay. So maybe I won't increase my uh, nitrogenous fertilizer. Maybe what I'll do is uh, convert, well, in a cropping sense, converting from intensive tillages to no till. There's not, I don't know the percentage of, of uh, fully tilled country these days, but we've been going towards low till and no till for, for quite some time. But let's say that you, you, you instead of nitrogenous fertilizer, what I'm going to use is an organic fertilizer. 
that doesn't contain nitrogen. And, and in that way, and, and you don't have to stop if you're a nitrogen user, you don't have to stop it entirely, you can just reduce it. So, so it's, a, it's about thinking uh, your way around on my country with my enterprise, and if, if my enterprise is mainly grazing within these, uh, you know, the farmers that we might be speaking to this evening, then, you know, altering your grazing regime is a very good start. And then you go and you look up other, other things that will increase your soil carbon. Humic acid, all, all sorts of, of, of things. So, and so that was just a list of some of those possibles, but then you may implement other land management activities, so long as they're not covered in section 11 and 12, and I'll show you what that is. Um, and so they're, they're providing you with, with as much flexibility as, as, they, as they can. Um, section, you know, it's things like the prohibited things. So this is why you have to be careful. You know, can I apply, somebody asked me the other day, can I apply wood vinegar? Now, I don't know about wood vinegar. <laughs> and so I would, but I would ask the question, um, what evidence do you have that wood vinegar will increase soil carbon? Okay, so they're the sort of questions. What evidence do you have? And if they've got peer reviewed evidence, or even strong evidence that it improves it through trials, through papers, specifically in Australia, though, they're not going to really approve it if it's only done overseas. You know, what about if I want to apply seaweed to my soils? You know, farmers are marvellous uh, inventors if you give them the chance. So don't think that you may not have a solution to improving soil carbon, but remember that if you want to use it in a soil carbon project, you're going to need to show your evidence as to why it will increase soil carbon. And if you don't have a, a, an idea or a product, then you go looking and my exhibitors all want to show you, you know, why they're worm juice, why they're humic acid, why they're each of their different things, uh, you know, will will increase uh, soil carbon. Um, there's a few other, you know, things that you're not allowed to do, and so you just when the 2021 method comes out, that will be made clearer for this new method as well. You have to write, or I have to write a land management strategy. And, and the, the clean energy regulator wants to know, uh, you know, what's, what's going to be your main activity? My main activity is going to be uh, intensification of grazing. I'm going to go from 10 paddocks to 20 paddocks. And this will allow uh, grazing intensity to be better. It will allow my ground cover to be better. It will enable my uh, digestibility of the pasture to be better, I can manage better uh, the biomass and therefore achieve a biomass increase above and below ground. And that's the sort of thing that you put into the land management strategy. It does not have to be war and peace. It's a simple one. It doesn't include anything else apart from what you're doing in the soil carbon space. But you have to talk about a, a, a few things like risks. You know, what are the main risks to this? And to, to show that um, you understand uh, the ins and outs of what you're about to undertake. So, and, and it's a good process to go, to go through as well. And so this is what you're required to do, description of how the new management activities, yes. And you can, uh, this goes back, that second point goes back to what I was just saying then, which is, um, that, you know, if you wish to have something that's fairly novel, uh, you know, Charlie Carp in the 2018 method was difficult to use, to use under, under the rules, but under the new rules, it will be able to be, uh, to be used. So some of those uh, um, more unusual things are already allowed. Well, they used to be unusual anyway, um, outside of MPK, basically. So, um, and then you must use 
so okay we've uh, we've registered the project uh, and we've become a fit and proper person we're in the clean energy regulator portal we've got a portal uh, you know um, login and all of those things and we've achieved registration we've done uh, some mapping and there are some tools coming available for all of this so that a farmer could manage at least part of it on, on their own but then the soil, it's important to understand that the soil carbon measurement is very specific. You have to have a certain, um, your, your core has to be a certain size and um, has to be done in a certain manner. The random sampling is really, they're very strong on, so you have to use a random sampler, you know, something that gives you the true random spots wherever you're going. And the person who samples must also uh, meet certain parameters as well. So the farmer cannot just go out, okay, I've registered, I'm doing this project on my own, I'm not doing it with a, a, a project developer, uh, but I can't go out and measure my own soil now. I must engage somebody who is qualified. And again, those are the type of people at my conference, but there, there are a couple of them now uh, coming, coming there. The land must have been pasture for the last five years uh, in a new method. The new method has got a measure model measure approach. So, so in the efforts to reduce the barrier, which is soil carbon testing, which has been a barrier, one barrier, because of the expense, the random nature of it, just what I've just said, a certain person has to have it. They have a big rig, it's on the back of a ute or on a trailer, and you have to take, bring them to your piece of land, to your project area. They have to do the job, and then they have to send the samples off, and they have to get them tested. So, you know, it's digging holes is not the cheapest way, and yet it's the most accurate way. So what the government is trying to do in this next iteration is allow a measurement model measure approach. Now that is something that is, is coming through at an industry level, um, not, at a particular, not at a farmer level, but ultimately uh, it will benefit all, all, um, all, all farmers that want to do this. Uh, the, uh, yeah, if, when, a, when a method comes out, there is the method, which is LAW law, and then there is an explanatory statement or a supplement, which has, has got more readable uh, in English in it. So as, as per what we were uh, you know, saying the other day. Now I'm just going to show you. So what we figured um, is that we need about 15 or 20 minutes to show you the, uh, the look see. It's 7.07 now. I'm just gonna show you a few of the things that we did uh, when we were on Yumbi and where we farmed for 20 years and that when we were experimenting in this, remembering that, you know, we were doing this quite some, some time ago. And our, our main thing was always uh, time control grazing. We were trained in uh, holistic management and that is uh, why I believe in particular that the management of your animals it is the um, cornerstone of your carbon farming. And that is, that, that is what you know, we, we did over that time. So we had um, uh, fine wool merinos and, uh, and we understood that in order to um, make pro the paddocks more productive, we needed to get what's called animal impact. And this was a perfect paddock to do it on and to show the effect, because it was small, four hectares. We, we had around 2000 um, sheep in which to do it and it was enclosed. So they couldn't get anywhere unless they wanted to swim uh, the Yumbi River in, in order to, to get that. So they just love going into something like that, of course, but you, 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 you get them in and better, better done with cattle. At, at, at this point, you, you know, there, that's a lot of vegetable matter um, in, in the wool potentially there. So, but what, what, we, what we wanted to show is the animal impact that can be done, large amount of animals, very short amount of time. 
And this is, you, you know, uh, holistic management, RCS, uh, int intense rotational grazing, whatever you want to call it. But it's a way that you use your animals to control the uh, biomass above and, and below ground. So now we've got sunlight, we've got all of those other things, and you get that type of response. And you can see now I need to do the same thing in the paddock opposite. But uh, that, that is the principle of uh, intensification of, of animal grazing to improve the, the quality of, of the land that you're on. We used to use mulching, not, um, not uh, windrowing, not, um, you know, mulching so it was all even over the whole paddock. And we had a, a, a lot of uh, saffron thistle when we first came. And after we were trained, we decided that we would mulch uh, this. And you can see just how impossible that was. You know, the sheep, there was no way that the sheep were going to do anything there. There's no productivity, none. And so we mulched the grass and, and, and that was uh, it just mulch. And then, you know, you, you get that response after that. You get the sunlight in, you get the ability uh, for the seeds to, to grow. And it's principles for mulching, uh, a garden of, you know, the same as the principles for, for, for mulching on a farm. The idea is that under ideal circumstances, you do it with your animals. You know, you don't use a, a machine. If I, and if I'd had any animal that could have gone through that. We also decided to, um, we wanted the, we wanted the um, side effect. We, we wanted the edge effect. And uh, so what we did, was instead of, sorry, it always does that and I don't know why. We wanted the edge effect. So we didn't mow, this is it uh, in the next season. We didn't mow the whole of it. We mowed it in um, sections. And that way, what we got was some areas where, you know, your insect life, your spiders, your everything else could stay. However, We've now got pathways down which the sheep can get right down the bottom. We haven't got that saffron thistle problem anymore. And, you know, we've got a productive thing. So this is the type of thing that we did in order that, you know, we could grow more, more things. This is a very good, um, a, a, a very good sign here because it, it has sharp edges and you've just got to read down to the bottom. So that's always just to see if you've been paying attention. So that's actually a pretty good uh, time segue there, Stephanie. So um, what we're going to do now is that we are going to uh, sh swap over to look see. So I need to stop sharing. Is that is that correct? Yeah, Stephanie. So let's say yeah. you were using some kind of method that involved a tractor. Would you have to account for the the diesel you used? In, in your, your accounting, yeah, okay. And, and also for the methane in the cattle. Yep. Yeah? So, yeah, you do, it is a, a, a net thing. Yep. Uh, now, so do I, mine says new stop. share, or will I just escape from mine and? Yeah, you, if you stop share. It says new, oh, stop share, cool. And then. So now we're going to show you how to go to look see, which was that CSIRO uh, site that we spoke of last week, which is where you can go to uh, explore your own country and get an estimate of the carbon uh, under different methods. And, and we'll see how that, that is. We'll just give you an example here, but this is the free, CSIRO site. So let's have a look at that. I'll just check if there's any. Yeah, right so for the sake of this demo, we're going to be in Arthur's Creek. Um, you can use this area tool up here to draw a polygon. And how big is this going to be? Yeah. <laughs> so, so you can see that she's chosen 10 hectares. Now that's going to be a little bit too small to show much carbon. 
so we we will just get her Stephanie to uh, increase the size of that. Yes, see if we can find that patch of trees again. <laughs> And is there a reason you chose this area, no. Stephanie? Is it just because you know it? Oh, why Arthur's Creek or why this bit? Yeah. Um, oh, well, it's in Nolimbic and there's lots of um, lots of beef grazing predominantly in Arthur's Creek. Mm -hmm. And this bit, I I just lived in randomly. I'm not sure okay. where, where we found before, but. No, it's not. We haven't got that nice group of trees, but that's okay. Um, it, it will still give us a per hectare amount, which is, mm -hmm. you know, important. I don't think we'll, for this exercise, we'll probably exclude much. So everybody, you can see that we've selected a 21 hectare block in one block. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, in order to find the block that, that is yours, you just uh, input um, where you are. That's correct, isn't it, Stephanie? You just, uh, yeah, you can search you... for your address or you can just zoom in uh, as as much as you want and um, build your polygon. Yeah. So, okay, so we've got 21 hectares. Now, the next step is areas to exclude. We have got a little bit up there um, on that top right. Yes, you need to exclude that. And then there's that dense area on that left area there, whatever that so we, is. That, yeah, would we be yeah. excluding dams? Yes, yes, yeah. unless you plan to increase your soil carbon in your dam, which might not be achievable just at the moment. <laughs> would you so, maybe, yep. what, 15%? Uh, I, I'm even going to go 12, but because right. we know you've right. got to exclude... Um, Yes, so we're going to tick that we're going to exclude forest, native forest, settlement, yeah, right righto. And, and, and we're just going to say that that's, that ta is taking up approximately, what did we say, 12%, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we need to say prior, uh, what were our prior production systems? And this one was pasture, that's right. And then... We have not, we were just going to say we have not done any pasture renovation um, and during the last five years, but we have used synthetic for nitrogen. That's, that's going to get us. <laughs> that'll, that'll hurt us. Uh, but we're not going to use lime and we're and not going to apply irrigation. irrigation. Okay. And... So it appears that you're eligible for carbon farming methods that include new irrigation, but we're not going to do that. So we'll answer no there, and then we'll go to the next. Now, just, just be aware this is a fairly small area. Now, what it's come up with is based on the information provided, it, it, it says that this area is potentially usable for any one of those methods. Now, therein is a weakness of this look-see because there is no way that you would make enough money under the beef herd management. And, and we might even click on that in a minute, you know, just to, just to see. Because for a beef herd management one, you need something like 10,000 head or, you know, 7,000. And, and so now she's going to do it. And so under the beef herd management, oh, they want to know all sorts of things like that. That is going to be annoying. Um, okay, just put some things in. For interest sake. So you can see, get a number. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah that's right. Just to see if we can get a number. And, and it says you've got to provide some more detail. So... Under the, the the beef herd management, you can muck around with that. Obviously, you've got to put in yeah. some more we'll details. But, yeah. <laughs> so we'll go. But I can assure you that I, that, that beef herd management one will not work under about 7,500 head. The, uh, the AA Co is using it, if you're familiar with the AA Co, which is yeah, one of our largest ones. The, 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 the same will be... Um, so, so, and it is said that you're eligible for the human-induced regeneration of an even-aged native forest. 
And it said over a 25 year period, you will be able to earn 1,474 credits, which at least confirms that it's not viable. You know, that, that then it's just not viable for that method. Uh, even if you thought that it could regenerate, if you left it and you thought it would regenerate to forest, you can't plant it under that particular method, you can't plant it. And so you'd be sitting there hoping that that would return to forest. So, you know, fairly, fairly low likelihood. But again, there's quite a lot of assumed knowledge in what I've just said. And so, you know, for, for, for somebody without that sort of knowledge, just to look at this, they might just go, that's just weird. You know, what, what is it talking about? But I know that um, the one to look at is the reforestation by uh, environmental or, or mallee planting. The natural region. At which pretty much doubles the natural region. Okay. So you can see that uh, across that, uh, that area, if you and we can we can do a, a rough sum on on this now you get two two thousand eight hundred and seventeen over twenty five years divided by twenty five years is equal to one hundred and twelve units carbon credits per year. It's not a lot, and so it, you know the, they're in, but. Right now, let's say if you had that for sale right now, times thirty dollars that you could get right now, that's three thousand. Uh, three, three, let, let's say three thousand four hundred dollars a year. Is it worth it in terms of how much money you would have to put into the trees, and how much you would need to, uh, you, you know, for your audit and and things like that. However, what if, what if by the time, if you registered that project today, you would not be trading for another two to 2.5 years. So you, you, know, you need to make some uh, educated guesses as to what the carbon might be worth in, at that point in time. So, but, and you can see that it's 6.2 per hectare. So you could then you, you know, do some other sums on, on other hectares as well. What this puts in is, uh, you know, your district. It has used its knowledge of your district and, and what's at, at, at your district or Arthur's Seat, um, Arthur's Creek, Creek, not Arthur's Seat, <laughs> Arthur's Creek. Um, it, it's put in there what it knows about that area in order to come up with that. Okay, now, uh, Stephanie said you, you might want to, you know, think about this one. Has it come up with a value at all? Um, Stephanie? Uh, and, so there are two. Sustainable intensification, 50, 25 year estimate. Okay. <laughs> so what, what, what this shows is the reason why nobody has taken up this method. This method has not been taken up by one farmer or one carbon developer because they've used estimations of soil carbon from what they know and the calculator doesn't know a lot and so they they thought farmers might be happy to receive a token amount we've always said farmers want the best that they can get so uh, you know that that estimation method will be improved over time it will be improved over time but just to let you know that the default values that they're using are so low that nobody has taken up remember i said there were 26 method and only five or six had been taken up this is one that hasn't been taken up and you can start to see why those methods haven't been taken up okay so we're going to quickly go through the uh, the soil carbon one now, um, so have we been told that, that it needs more? Do you think it's there? So, do you think it's so low because the like look see as a tool is very conservative, or because like that that's all 
you might be able to generate. Are you talking about that default method, Stephanie? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, the, the default method is so low is because we've never done the studies required mm -hmm. to know which management produces which soil carbon responses. With the measurement method, that's what we're starting to find out. So we're starting to find out that if you do multi-species pasture cropping on Gippsland, you know, in Gippsland, which is where it was, was done, you can achieve X amount, you know? Um, and so that's, that's the type of information you then need to feed into a model. So it's actually our models of soil, okay? It's our models of soil carbon increase that were so low that caused those default values to be so low. If we had more research, so now we're doing real life research on real life projects and getting real life information because it's very rigorous. Okay, now did this tell us before that we needed more information, Stephanie, when we looked at this? Or did uh, you just tell oh, us yes, here we go. Yeah. Soil carbon percentage. Yes. So uh, they've got an estimate and it's it's really thinking about this. It's yes, it's oh wow, there you go. So you know, put a valid use estimation result okay and that's a good warning right at the top there less than 50 percent of the sample points from within the area around the polygon are valid use this estimation result with caution yeah so the, it's just saying it, it hasn't got a lot of information or yeah. it doesn't feel you know that there's sufficient uh, points on on which to take it i'm not sure uh, about that but that's really interesting, Stephanie, because when we looked at this before, the estimated 0 to 30 centimetre soil carbon content for your polygon was 2.5. It was 2.3 at quarter past six. <laughs> that's interesting. A little way away from Martha's Creek, so, in, in another yeah, area yeah. of Martha's Creek. Yeah. So what, what it's estimated is that in, in your area, in that particular area, it thinks using all of the information that it's got, that you have around 2.5. Now, what we are going to say is, well, we're really sorry, but our actual 0 to 30 centimetres, remembering that in a soil carbon project, you can go down to a metre, okay? Now, this is only estimated to the first 30 centimetres. So there's a, there could be a much different story deeper down, which is why you would never use this tool to decide about your soil carbon project. It's more accurate in this tree carbon one, but in the soil carbon one, simply by, by having a parameter of 0 to 30 centimetres is limiting the results, okay? So but we're going to say, actually our soil carbon, we, we, this is a really flogged out piece of land. It's, uh, we're gonna call it 1.5, Stephanie. down yeah 1.5 and look there's a vast amount of australian uh agriculture that is farmed on 1.5 and and i think 2.5 for this particular district just looking at that piece of land it, it is it is an overestimate as well so we're going to say no we've got the soil tests and our soil tests say it's 1.5 now our target okay what are we what, what are we going to target and this is where you get to play around with it a little bit Okay, and you can see the things that are moving there. Yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah, right. <I> was... <laughs> that, you are ambitious. So that, you know, if you told... Does anyone uh, in the audience that, have any soil, yeah, look, recent soil measurements that they have done that can inform this? That's correct. That is correct. That's exactly correct. Um, you, you know, and if you know what the soil carbon uh, content percentage wise is of say, it's always thought that cemeteries have got quite high soil carbon, you know, because they, they, they haven't been disturbed and potentially they've had some good biomass and, and things like that. So, uh, you know, that 
uh, or, or up the top of the mountain. And so now, have we got that figure now? Uh, um, so now we're there. We've yeah, got okay. twenty-one. Okay. Uh, yeah, tons a hectare per year. There you go. So, uh, that, and that is on that ambitious target of taking it from one point five to five. Okay. Gee, I tell you what. We could it's a heap better than planting trees if you can do it. Isn't it? But yeah, yeah, exactly. Now take it back down. And we go confirm. And yeah, 15. Okay. So let's just do it to, for one, yeah, for 1.5 to three. Yeah. Even that. Yes. Good. Remembering that you sequester carbon and you sell carbon dioxide, okay? So, so the tons of CO2, so to get how many tons of carbon that you've stored, you go 9.42 divided by 3.67, uh, yeah, by 3.67, you've sequestered 2.56 tons of, CO, of carbon and you've sold 9.42 tonnes. And I can never stop smiling when I say that. It's just like, it's the little bit of magic <laughs> that, that we've got there. So I really hope that that has assisted um, you all to understand how to uh, muck around in, in this particular tool to give you some ideas. And it's interesting that, you know, that that tree carbon's a bit disappointing for me, uh, you know. That's because that's CO two. It's it's only suggesting, therefore, that you're sequestering, because the same the same sum applies divided by three point six seven. You're you're storing one point six tons of CO two per hectare uh, carbon. Sorry, per hectare. It seems low to me, but you know, to do the, the proper job, you have to, you know, go a bit further than, than this does. So with that, we've done a perfect timing, but do we have questions? No, we have. So if, if there are no questions, um, Please continue to, oh, we did have that other question, Stephanie, didn't we, that came through, Ian Young's. Yep, about so, um, more urban areas. Yes, so we had a question about uh, tree planting in more urban areas, um, and it, it is possible. Uh, I uh, took a, some areas of a council area, through to registration in the tree planting space so it it is possible the smallest area is 0.2 of a hectare remember but you just saw some of those um, calculations so you would put how much area you can get uh you, you know into your tree planting it has to be have been cleared of forest for five years it has to be 0.2 of a hectare it has to be trees native to that district and it can't be a monoculture. It has to be a, a choice of, you know, five, six or, or, or so species. They have to be able to attain two metres and above, and they have to be able to have a canopy cover of 20%. So, and I'm, I'm happy to talk to anyone off, offline uh, about any of that as well. And um, so Val has said, what has been the most popular project? Well, the most popular method Val is that forest regrowth method, uh, which is the long term for, for it is the human induced regeneration of an even aged native forest and it's forest regen. It's suitable to large areas, small levels of abatement across a large marginal country. Um, one of my projects in that method is 130,000 hectares. Now at that level, my farmer is making a very good uh, carbon income from that, that, that trumps 
anything else, uh, even in the current market uh, for cattle and things. But it also assists when it goes dry and the cattle market goes off and you know all of all of those sorts of things. So that one is the most popular. Uh, the soil, the soil carbon one is becoming increasingly uh, popular. Remnant ve vegetation. Um, so uh, the remnant veg one uh, val comes into those uh, ones that are additional to an ACCU. Uh, and the government is piloting, I think it's on one of those slides where, where I talk about the, the federal government ones. The government is piloting paying people for areas of remnant vegetation. It would not be a carbon credit. It would be something like a stewardship payment or something along those lines. So, and, and the sizes, if you've got a thousand acres of remnant vegetation, I would feel it unlikely that you would get paid for all of that. But the, the suggestion is that you add it to some of the other availabilities so that you're looking not just for so say back in that tree planting and we're only getting six tons per hectare per year or something like that well is there another is there another one where i can add biodiversity uh, benefits to it you know because it's not gonna pay me unless I, unless i do that has there been any discussion of a new south wales land restoration oh look new south wales have got, have got different things happening but they they're not um they no is 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 the direct answer to that is no not similar to the one in queensland which is also now similar to the one in west australia so west australia has almost doubled up on it you know and said oh there's a good model can we use that model yet yeah, no worries we've already got some pilots we've got some results go for it west australia uh and and south australia hasn't announced anything new south wales has got different things and they've got very high targets but in terms of um yeah a, a land restoration fund or exactly what their their model is i think it's a a, a wait and see approach um exactly that could complement that no look in new south wales right at the moment what you're therefore looking for is your new south wales one plus federal and the federal ones are being done only in pilot sites at the moment. And I can tell you that because I'm not one. And I was, you know, the proverbial when I found out that uh, Central West didn't mean orange, uh, which it normally would. So, yeah, they're, they're, they're putting pilots out at the moment that could complement. But in New South Wales at the moment, you're going uh, ACC, you're going federal really in New South in New South Wales at the moment. I hope that makes some sense. <laughs> Louisa, do you anticipate that every state will have um, other options soon? Uh, look, I know that New South Wales is working on different aspects and different ways of, of potentially assisting farmers you know to enter this market so given that given the victorian government one that we that we've you know that's still coming uh given the west australian one lrf given the the queensland one we're getting there you know what's tassie doing don't know uh a swan territory yeah those those ones but it's um it's an evolving it's an evolving space yeah um Luisa, <clears throat> Luisa, I have a question. It's Gunnar from uh, Silic Harvest. Hi, How are you going? Yeah. Good, the, um, um, uh, the soil carbon methodology in uh, Australian system, uh, how, how is that uh, comparable to the other methods, uh, soil carbon methods in the other, other international methods, such as like all these, go, uh, yeah. the, the <clears throat> uh the gold carbon method and you know the you know the other yes. american systems and all that yes it's really interesting gonna because um under a little innovation connections grant that carbon farmers of australia has got we've been comparing and contrasting 
exactly what you just said, specifically in the soil carbon space, as well as uh, the, the agroforestry space. Uh, the only good international available one is under the VIRUS system, uh, and it is VM0042, if you want to look it up, or you and I can look that up as well. And it has got potential because of its international flavour. However, nobody has uh, got credits yet, but we are talking to some people in South Africa, of all places, that are boldly putting the first of those projects in Guna. So that's right. how new any other ones are that are workable. When we compared the gold standard and uh, American uh, carbon registry and, and those ones, the Vera system came out as the, as the best one and yet still difficult to put in. So the, the Australian soil carbon projects uh, method is still ahead in at least the fact that you know you can you, it's an established method it's been done and you know uh, already there's credits type of thing but certainly we're keeping our eye on VM42 an international method for for soil carbon yes thanks uh, Louisa thanks for that no problem but no new hats. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Ian. Ian was impressed and disappointed by the mulching effects. Great grass, but no new hats. <laughs> you know you don't wear a new hat in the country, Ian. Um, uh, are you able to answer? There's one more question, if we could just go back. Is there a guideline one can use for how much carbon is sequestered per tree in a regenerated forest area? Or is that too granular? I, 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 I hate being asked a question I can't answer, Stephanie. <laughs> I pride myself on answering most of them. However, um, the direct answer is not that I know of. So in a, uh, how much carbon is sequestered per tree in a regenerated forest area? Uh, based on land holding, but I don't know for, for what purpose that, you know, that would also uh, do. So you, your forest is regenerated. You can't use it for a, a carbon project. Uh, in, the, in the very early ones of, of, the, of the tree carbon ones, in the avoided deforestation where they were paid not to cut the trees down, you literally had to do what's called destructive sampling in order to estimate how much carbon. And that, and that is you cut it down, you burn it, you weigh it, you do all of those things. So yeah, I, 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 yeah, no, nope. not that I'm aware of. It, I guess it would also depend if you are required to have a mixed environmental planting and you had you know, different species of, of trees and, and other you know, uh, shrubs in there that would, very widely between species. That's true, and, and, and that's why in that in in that um, uh, in that model that, that we just showed you, look, look, see, they they must have put in a selection of trees that are specific relative to that area in the background. Otherwise, how could they have calculated that that? tree sequestration so if you were able to find trees with better sequestration or larger canopies or anything you could quite possibly beat that and they are always conservative all of the calculators are conservative any last questions yes uh, I, have, I have a ahead. question uh, just uh, yeah. further elaborating on this uh, question I posted earlier about uh, uh, sequestration of carbon per tree. Uh, I was reading a book on, uh, uh, on, uh, by Peter Wollobin on the hidden life of trees. And uh, he is, uh, uh, he's uh, uh, obviously a you know, forest manager in, in Germany. And they, uh, in this forest that he's been managing, I forget the exact tree type, but uh, they talk about, uh, he talks about how much carbon these, these old uh, trees 
actually sequester per tree, right? I mean, obviously, it's got they've got much more mm -hmm. data than than what uh, uh, you know we have, and and it's a pretty uh, new field. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, I think it'll be very useful. You know, you you you've uh, heard you I've heard you speak, Luis, over the number of uh, of uh, you know farmers and how the hip pocket uh, helps them. I mean, to, to really get this whole project started off, it'll be wonderful to have to give them a a, a thumb rule tool, say. You, you plant one gum tree, or, you know, be it for saving the koalas, for example. You know, you plant one gum tree, you sequester, you know, maybe, I don't know, X number of units, which translates into X number of units, which translates into, you know, X number of dollars over X number of years, you know, whatever. Yeah, so that, because farmers are not very, 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 you know, uh, I think uh, a patient or, or, or good or competent to actually manage these uh, go through these spreadsheets and, and uh, tools and, and try to, to understand, you know, how they're going to uh, visualize a, a, a business model. So that's just a yeah. suggestion. I, I, I don't. I mean, it's a, it's a thought. It is. It's a look, um, yeah. Look, no, no problem. So I, I do think that tool is the best that we've got. And and so what what we were able to ascertain just then was that uh, you know across that type of land you are able to sequester in a assumed forest position uh, because it's, it assumes that you're going to build a forest, um, 6.72 tonnes of CO2 per hectare. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. no, I could, not, I could not give them a better estimate mm -hmm. than that. And look, I do disagree a little bit in that I find that the younger farmers are quite happy to jump in there and move around and put polygons in and, and spreadsheets. I mean, I'm terrible at spreadsheets, but yeah. you know, this one is actually quite easy as long as you know, you know where you are. Farmers quite like looking at, at their own uh, farms and things. I, I find. Okay, no, thank you, Brian. No problem. Gonna is your hand up from before? Did you forget to put your hand down? Yes. Okay. Great. Sorry. No problem. <laughs> uh, hello. Hello. Uh, this is uh, Joe Vaughan. If you if we had a baseline on the carbon uh, levels in the soil uh, three years ago, mm -hmm. uh, and then did some hydro cropping and uh, mulching, composting, various different methods, are you able to uh, record back from that three years ago? Or do you have to start now? Oh gosh, Joe! I wish you hadn't asked that question. No, is the is the dreadful answer, and and it is because of that. All of that that you've done has no doubt, quite possibly, increased your soil carbon. However, oh, we've we've actually um, sampled every year, and it has increased the soil carbon. Yeah! Wow. <laughs> I wish you'd registered it as a project, Joe. I really do. No. Now, you know, registration is first. And then that baselining has to be done according to the, the actual method. And it can't be done by the farmer. Now, do you have any other new areas where you could repeat the process, Joe, or, or, or not? Uh, no, it's an established vineyard. But we're able to prove the carbon levels were higher in the vineyard than they were on the headlands, which is the like the original pasture, if you like. So is it a vineyard? <laughs> no, yeah, it that's is, the yeah. name of the problem. And and you've improved the carbon in the rows between the between the vines, correct? Correct, yeah. Fantastic. That's a <laughs> definite soil carbon project. Well, it is, can... it is, and, and the we have the uh, the baseline recorded, but uh, yeah, didn't didn't do anything yeah. other than that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, you, you know, when you start your new next new vineyard, or you get some, you know, clapped out country somewhere, Joe, you can register it, and you can then do a soil carbon project. But it, it is not retrospective. I'm sorry okay. to say. But even now. Um, Continuing on, it will continue to increase. So I could register now. Well, 
Well, if you registered it now, as is, and say you'd only moved it, you know, a, a, a small amount, and you've still got more that you can move it, then yes, absolutely, mm. register it. But you just got to understand that whatever you've whatever you've done beforehand can't be counted to be paid in a credit. It can be counted in that you've improved your soils, but it can't be counted to to you know earn a credit. But sure, and understand that so sort of three years out of twenty five is done. Kind of, yeah, that's all right. Yeah. Is vineyard actually your last name, and and you, and no. it is a vineyard? All oh, right. No, okay. No, no, I didn't <laughs> didn't take that name on. <laughs> <laughs> that was going to be quite amazing. You could call okay. my married name. <laughs> well, Thank you, Louisa. In that case, so. Um, with they've applied mulch to the vineyard and whatever other methods would you if you did your soil you registered now and you did all your you know jump through all the hoops now could you continue using the methods that you'd done in the previous three years or would they be not able okay. to be continued very good point very good point and just to reiterate you have to find a new activity so if Joe and Amanda have been doing what they've been doing, but their, their plans from now are to um, intensify it, um, you know, change it uh, slightly, um, we do need a new activity, okay, that's on the, that, that is on the list. So in the, the example I gave that is in grazing, you could increase the number of paddocks and that increases the intensification. So, so Amanda, and Joe may need to. Um, that's a late person entering the, the waiting room. Um, so, uh, yeah, so thank you for reminding me to remind Amanda and Joe that in spite of that, they do need to then find a, an, an additional thing to do. But, um, now, in the tree, in the bushfire, yeah, right. Yeah, with the vineyard, oh, excuse me. Yeah. Yes. Oh, there? Yeah. Um, just having the vineyard there actually uh, increase the carbon. The photosynthesizing, pushing it down into the yes. soil. You could almost yes. not do anything in it, <laughs> does it? Yeah. Yes. Uh, we have to yeah, send, right. yeah, we have to random sample, uh, remembering Joe, and we yeah. have to exclude in the vineyard, we have to exclude the actual vines. So it's oh. inter vine, the, the, it's the inter rows. And uh, it, you know, so it's it's trickier, but it's certainly I I would never say that it's not worth doing, you know, for 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 that reason. Thank you. Okay. Uh, what happens if somebody starts approaching our trees are burned? I think we got this one the last time as well, um, and they are not able to replant. Uh, can the project cease without penalty? Look, if they're not able to replant, I guess that's a an issue. Uh, because normally in a in a fire you you pause the credits until the trees are back to where they were, you, you know. Uh, if if it was a catastrophic fire that completely burnt out and and then you can't replant, you know that's a difficult situation <laughs> because you'd be hoping to to replant and and then. Um, claim the credits when the trees are back to where they were and you'd also you know hope that the, the trees weren't completely de destroyed so but you know i would take that one to the clean energy regulator if, the, if that one happened if you get say a two percent increase in soil carbon then can you pleasure and then you plat yeah okay um uh howard uh so howard is asking i think everyone can see the chat but howard is asking if you get uh, to say a two percent increase in soil organic carbon, then you plateau over subsequent years. Do you continue to have the ability to sell that increased carbon over multiple ongoing years? No, not until you go back up again, Howard. So um, you know that two percent is is quite a good amount. That might have taken you five, seven, even ten years to to do your two percent, and then your next one uh, you don't increase, and so you don't make a claim. But as long as you've, you've kept your 2% increase, 
you don't have to pay back or anything like that. And then you might look at your soil and you might go, well, am I at equilibrium? Do I think that I'm going to be able to go any further? Or, uh, you, you know, if I am, what might I do to, in, the, in the next iteration? Or it's also possible, you know, you don't put your whole, for larger farmers, you don't put your whole country into one soil carbon project. You might put a proportion, a quarter, let's say. And then while you're increasing it, and while it's potentially plateauing five, 10 years down the track, you've also now got a new patch that you started two years later that's still on that increase. So, you know, again, you use, anybody that comes to you and says to use your whole farm in one project, I don't actually agree with that. I actually agree, uh, if you've got the size, if you've only got 20 hectares, that's gonna be a little bit hard. But it, you know, if you've got 500 hectares, you, you can put, you can have four rolling soil carbon projects and extend that, that uh, income out and also extend it you know, past the point where you might be reaching equilibrium. Of course, when you reach equilibrium, Again, you've got very productive soils and, and good water holding capacity and, and good soil structure. So, you know, the, there's, those are the, the benefits as well. Okay. I think the questions have dried up, unless anyone has any last minute um, burning questions for Louisa. Um, if you do have any, any questions over the course of the week, um, or there's any um, topics that you would love Louisa to cover next week, um, please feel free to email us environment at nelumbic.vic.gov.au and we can we can make sure that we incorporate incorporate that into next week's webinar. Yep. And and failing that, I'll talk about the, you know, just the rules around tree planting. And potentially we could visit the clean energy regulator. Uh, portal sites and and you know we could have a troll around that if, 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 good. if, if you like um stephanie will be very pleased to do that with us <laughs> she can drive that bit as well lovely okay all right have a lovely evening everyone and we'll see you next thursday at 6 30 p.m no problem see you then bye, bye. now